is that going to be? As Iraqi forces fight in an all-out battle to reclaim Mosul, taken by ISIL in 2014, we sit with two of Iraq's most distinguished artists to talk to them about the ongoing bloodshed and destruction in the country, home to what is considered one of the oldest civilizations. I'm Jane Dutton, and this week, two Iraqi artists, Dia Azawi and Mahmoud Abedi, talk to Al Jazeera. But before sitting down with Abedi and Azawi, they gave us a tour through their exhibitions in Doha. Dear Al Azawi has been part of the art scene in Iraq since the 1960s. His exhibition at the Al Riwak Gallery showcases a retrospective of 500 works that revisit art and narratives that have defined and redefined the Middle East. I suggested to, to go to the last exhibition I had in Baghdad, in this hall. I did work about the massacre of Tel uh, Zahtar in 74. And also, after that, I had this uh, large painting which I did about Sabra Shatila in 1982. That's also what happened in, in Beirut. Uh, so this is work which may be in a way that I try to give a voice to somebody who got no ability to speak what happened to yeah. his family, to his friends. Mahmoud Abedi's exhibition at Katara Cultural Village is driven by the destruction of Iraq after the 2003 invasion. Abedi depicts the country's destruction through a series of installations. Interesting looking at all your stuff. I mean, you don't, there's nothing that you would traditionally associate with you. You're good at sculpture, you're good at painting, you're good. Is that a problem? It's a problem. It's commercial wise in the art scene, in the art field, it's a problem when you're not found by one kind of mm. art. But artistically, it's good that I'm totally free. I don't care about the commercial life. Mm. So I am free to do. Since I have all kinds of media around me, so I can use film, video, sculpture, painting, whatever I, at that moment, whatever I need. It's very good to have you both on Talk to Al Jazeera, and I had a fantastic day walking through both of your exhibitions. So thank you, and dear, if I could start off with you. I mean, very powerful stuff related to many parts of the Middle East. Talk me through your work and what inspires you and what the message is? It is not an easy way to talk about the Middle East, especially what's going on in the last uh, 10 years or 15 years. As an Iraqi, I cannot find an easy way to express my feeling, because for me, Iraq is not just a land with the flag and national anthem. This is a country or a land which my inner soul, which kept me working all these years, sharing the dream with its people to build the country in a creative way. So when this dream collapsed, since uh, actually beginning of 90s, it's not just because of the 2003 and invasion, how the country become, after the sanction, the fabric of the society completely destroyed, then open the window or the door to have a sectarian country, a country which is full of various religion, various uh, sect, used to live uh, and work together. Suddenly, everything become not only a question of the future, but also uh, a very uh, bad, and, and unforgettable to, 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 for, to put together how this country become not only collapse, I think, with, with, no, with no future. How do you take your country and seeing your country collapse and all the pain and all the misery, and how do you depict that in your art? What method do you use? It makes me, I'm, I'm, I live in London. I can get all the information maybe much better than the one who's living inside. But also, 
I have a commitment, moral commitment in a way, because part of my family there, part of my uh, friend there. When it became, especially after the 2003, when I found the Museum of Modern Art completely sacked, the Museum of Archaeology, uh, I'm an archaeologist, and I know what's, what does mean all these artifacts. When all these destroy, or I don't know what happened, uh, if it's sold outside, it becomes something for me, uh, like I got a book, beautiful book, and suddenly this book disappeared or destroyed. It's not an easy way to, to come back and get this beautiful book to become a reality. It's become something, a very bad memory for me. When you opened your exhibition here, it was the day that the fight or the offensive to retake Mosul began and I believe you were very emotional when you heard it. What, what does it mean, do you think, in Iraq's history now? It means a lot because I'm the one who supervised this museum. I did work there for two years to uh, exhibit the old artifact, which uh, when I saw the TV and the mayor of of Musa talking, this is this is not a uh, this is a fake, this is a plaster. I felt how much this guy ignorant of his history. He's this guy, somebody responsible to be to know what's going on. And suddenly, I found these pieces, which is very rare because uh, Mosul Museum contain all the work of from Hatra, which is this is the only site supervised by Iraqis, not by foreigners, like Babylon and Nineveh. So the destruction of these pieces does mean it's the, you can, uh, the uh, unique pieces that disappeared. We don't have now any, any of these, only maybe if they, uh, they rebuild in, uh, in, in, in a way which more likely they cannot do it as it is. Ahmed, you also quite a political artist. How did you feel when you heard what was going on in, in Mosul, the fact that they try, it's trying to be retaken from ISIL, the sort of damage that ISIL might have done in two years, and the fact, is, as you were saying, that you're losing much of your history? How important is that? This, the war of Mosul, for me, is like just one of the layers of destruction of Iraq. Like, what happened 2003 till today is just like war after war. So. I don't, I'm not very optimistic about what's happening in Iraq. Maybe within 20 years from now, I can answer this question. It's really tough now. And like is that, do you think that's the difference in your art? I mean, you mentioned to me a little earlier that you are not as optimistic as dear. Yes, I'm not, yeah. So your lack of in optimism, how do you depict that in your art? And talk me through the materials that you use. Yeah, as you see here in my show, like I always use the rusty material, like this is how I see Iraq now. Uh, the invasion it was really, it didn't give me any kind of hope. The way it happened, like uh, I lived in a different Iraq. I, I was in a Christian school all of my, uh, when I was in a, uh, like middle school, I was, uh, we didn't hear, hear of uh, Shia or Sunni or Yazidi in, in, in my time, uh, so when I, uh, I think the invasion was the beginning of uh, this study of destroying Iraq. And have you, through your art, through your research, worked out why? Uh, why the invasion? Yeah, why, why do you think there's this constant destruction, the rise of sectarian violence? Do you think there's something behind it? I, I don't know. I don't have an answer. It's too much. What happened for the past 13 years, it's a way too much. I change my mind every year. So I thought I'd just do the art in a way that reflects what's happening in my country. And it's quite brutal. You've got the Statue of Liberty hanging. You've got rope, which seems to tie everything together. How does that work? The rope is uh, showing you uh, the relationship between the first year of the invasion, the first moment of the invasion, to the second year, third year, and all this 13 years. The rope is the, it's the storytelling of the invasion of Iraq or destru destruction of Iraq.
perhaps one of the most remembered moments, at least as far as symbolism is concerned, happened five years after the invasion of Iraq, when George W. Bush visited the country, and this happened. An angry Iraqi journalist throws his shoes at the president. This is my guy. There's your man. Yeah. And the infamous shoe-throwing event. Yeah. The ultimate sign of disrespect. Yeah, just, yeah. exactly. Dear al -Azawi's exhibition doesn't focus only on Iraq. His work is connected to conflicts throughout the Middle East. And at the same time, I got uh, this large sculpture, which is a tribute to a cartoon, a one very well-known Palestinian cartoonist who was assassinated in London mid the uh, 80s. I thought to do something like this, just to remind the intellectual how much it's difficult when you cross the red line. I don't agree with uh, Mahmoud. Uh, I think it's the tragedy of Iraq starts when the war with Iran, this is one, it was eight years, uh, hundreds of thousands of people could from both sides. Then the biggest mistake by Saddam when he went to Kuwait. He created something which is no way can uh, get, uh, get out of it a benefit for his country or for Iraq. The destruction of, after this uh, war between Iraq, Iraqi army. Not was that cable, just hubris on his to, part? Was that him just provoking something unnecessarily so? And, and the yeah, impact it is not only that, but also, I mean, a part of my family in Kuwait. I mean, this is uh, in, in, in a sense that uh, a very big mistake politically, take the country to the age of destruction. Then we have a sanction for nine years or 10 years. Then we have the war. So the tragedy is also created by a politician who got no sense of what's going on outside the country. Any, any politician has to have a responsible, moral responsibility when he takes a decision. You cannot take the, the whole country just because you want to do something. This is what makes me really upset that how on earth a party which got all the element to be successful, to create a fantastic country, got everything which can help to build a, a, a country, can be a, a symbol in, in the whole area, and suddenly everything collapsed. You talk about moral responsibility. What is an artist's moral responsibility in telling such a, a multi-layered story of Iraq and other places in the Middle East, including Palestine? Yeah, because for any intellectual and artist have no means only to do this, to trying to document what he can feel or what he can see. Otherwise, I, I cannot defend my country or defend my family only in this way. But then you cannot be neutral. You cannot be just passing by. This is the, this is the main problem for a lot. I mean, for me, I'm trying to see the Iraqi art as a movement from outside. I feel there is a lot of lack of that kind of responsibility. People, they did not feel their country collapsing day by day. And is that what you learned? Mahmoud, Mahmoud from a generation which is maybe the last generation to be creative, even with this generation, which now everyone now, uh, I don't know, living in different parts of, uh, of, of the, either in the United States or Sweden. Or, and to work together again, it's not something easy for them to rebuild their friendship, rebuild their creativity as a group. This is very difficult. What were you going to say? Uh, I want to just disagree with the, uh, I was I was there during the war of uh, Iran and Kuwait. I left 91. Uh, he's right of everything about the war, but the 2003 war, it changed Iraq, like it destroyed the fabric of Iraq, it changed the culture, destroyed the museum, destroyed the libraries, destroyed everything. 
the war in, oh, with Iran, yes, it was really bad for Iraq, but after the war in 88, we still have Iraq, we still have everything, nothing destroyed from the culture. We still have the fabric, we still uh, have everything. Basically, we could have, at that time, we could build uh, Iraq again. But the sanction, the starting of the problem, the sanction, and then the 2003 war. I think 2003 war was the moment that it's meant to be changing this area, changing this Middle East, moving Iraq, destroying Iraq in a way. In a way, I mean, I'm talking about the culture of Iraq, the, everything. And then on your journey, I mean, how important is it to have a mentor like dear of the slightly older generation who'd lived through so much more and was able to depict the pain and the fear so well? How, how important was that? It was really important. Like, when I left Iraq 91, uh, it's, I know the name of the at that time, but when we met in Jordan, it was an important in a way that you have a mentor in your journey in a way. Uh, I was in touch with him all the time and uh, I went to study in Canada and, and all this period, like everything I do, like I go through the political and artistic experience he, he got. And how does that work? I mean, would you, pass information by each other or go, what do you think of this idea? Yes, this is the way. Like, what do you think? I'm, I'm doing this. Ah, uh, why don't you take it that line? He go, or why don't you do this the, instead of that? Someone did that before or someone did. It's just that easy way. We're, we're friends. Like, this is... Uh, is, it, is it a problem that so many important Iraqi artists have left? Do you start losing the narrative of your home if you're no longer there? I'll, uh... I mean, I'm, uh, for me, it's, it's, I was offside for you know, many years, but I become more interested in Iraqi art during the beginning of the year of sanction, when I felt I used to collect uh, European art and Arab art. Then I thought this is not the right way, I have to do something else. So I, because of that, I start trying to, to have more information about the younger generation. And I felt that the generation, 80s generation, which Mahmoud, one of them, and other artists, they are more creative and they are less affected by what's gone on in, in, in Iraq for the last five or ten years. It is not an easy for all these young artists, because some of them, they don't have the language. They have to start learning the, a different language. To go to Germany is different, because for us uh, in Iraq, the second language is the English. So for the one who got English is easier, but the one who went to Germany, to Italy, to uh, Sweden, it's become more difficult for him. And most of them, because of the war, they get married and they got children. And this is the responsibility, which is not an easy for anyone when come to Europe to survive and uh, working, I mean, as an artist, it's not that easy for them. It's not easy to find a gallery. So that's become, less and less creative, some of them, because of the fact of life, they have to do something different. And also, I think, force some of the creative ones to challenge themselves and do something more serious. And this is which really make me more close to them. So I try to work with the, about five or six of these artists, working together. I, f I don't feel I'm a, a, a teacher. I don't like to be a teacher, actually. I work with them as a friend, despite the difference in, in, in many years between I'm, us. I'm wondering how, if there wasn't a war, if there isn't an ongoing war, how that would affect your art? Would you be the artist that you are today without all this fighting? Uh, no, for sure. But I might be... I'm sure I'll do something else, for sure. Uh, I mean, something different kind of art. But this is the war, like, this is what I'm doing for the past 13 years, minimum. This is what you know? This is what I know. This is, I have enough material from Iraq to... And the material you get is, as you say, a material that's been used, that's been found on the battleground or... No, no, no. This is all made by me. Nothing. The, the piece of Saddam Hussein falling over as he was pulled over, I think everybody remembers that incredible moment. There was, that was a, the moment. a feeling of hope, wasn't there? What happened? What... 
What happened in your mind then? In my, in my mind, I was like, I felt like I knew this moment. I knew what they're doing. Like th that was, that was the moment. They left, they didn't hit the electricity and the TV. So that was the media moment. They want everyone to see that. That was the moment of end of Iraq for me. So they want us to see that. They didn't mean Saddam Hussein, they meant Iraq. So I felt that moment, it's the media moment. That's why I use it. So the, this is the end of, that will be the rope, the end of everything, from the infrastructure, from museum, from books, from everything. As an Iraqi, do you feel that you've been let down? Do you feel that more could have been done to make the situation better? Absolutely. Like the way, the way they've done it, they, I feel they, they have a plan to destroy Iraq. It's, there is a plan. Like I felt they studied that end? for 20 years before the, the 2003. They studied that. The way they did it, it's like a study of how it's a book, how, how you destroy the, a, a country. Do you agree with that? Uh, well, I'm, I, from my side, I mean, I, I know from in England, uh, everyone knows now that they did not have any secondary plan. When they went to Iraq without knowing what's going on, what would happen? So they no face, they face no a, the, 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 the problem of a society which is collapsing from inside. Even, even the opposition, the one which is in power now, nobody knows how the society from inside collapsed. It's, it's a, a country, it's bankrupt actually. Bankrupt from 90s. I mean, then the sanctions become more and more. So it's become too difficult even for the politician to rebuild the country. But the, the negative side for all these politicians, which they are some of them or most of them, Islamic uh, kind of uh, parties, they give the, the idea is how much they can get benefit to their sect, and that's it. So it's become, in a way, uh, anyone who try to get part of the wealth of this country to his benefit, to his people. And, 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 all... and again, so I'm going to draw back to, I mean, when you put your pieces up, and you as well, do those perpetrators look at it? Do you think it resonates with them? Is it, an important, is it something that's absorbed? And do you think your art can make a difference? I felt maybe I create an atmosphere so negative, in a sense, for the future. It makes things, make people who are really sincere from inside to express their hopeless case, what's going on will happen in this area. And this is like, uh, I mean, any Arabs, any Arabs, when they, even now, when after we were talking, I left, uh, two, two women came to the exhibition, they were talking absolutely the same way. What, what, why, why you did all this? Why you don't give us hope? I said, what hope I can give you? This is what I can do, not more I than mean, that. If there's no hope and you're showing that picture and you're hoping that it'll resonate with somebody, by you depicting the horrors that you see, is it cathartic for you? Do you, do you feel better? Um, I don't know if I feel better, but sometimes if, when I think about it, like, I mean, look at this piece, like, what am I gonna do after this show? After the opening, I start thinking, what am I gonna do with those pieces? I feel it's like, it's a kind of a commitment like, to document that, this. So now it's, a, it's like a kind of relief for me as, to do this, but, yeah, I didn't think of how much effect it will do in the society or in the... But it's just like, for me, it's a relief. It's just, I have to do it. So what next for you? Uh, I'm off for a year or something. And what about you? No, I'll keep working and I'm having an exhibition next month. I have no problem with that. I, I would like to See, create a, a wonderful... Yeah. <laughs> I, what, no, it is. I have Optimistic, to create a wonderful... Uh, atmosphere to anybody. I mean, do you, I have, do you have massive arguments when you always. together? And you go, no, this is completely yeah, yeah, No, no, we have, to, we have to. We cannot just uh, stop uh, working. I don't think. I think if you are faithful to Iraq, you have you keep yourself as creative, challenging yourself, uh, creating something, make other people jealous. This is the this is the, the only way. Well, thank you very much, dear Zawi Mahmoud Abedi. Thank you. And a big thank you as well to Qatar Museums and Katara Cultural Village. For me, Jane Dutton, thank you and see you next time.